Dirty Truth Radio Show, where we'll be talking about relationships, marriage, how to have sex, dating, first dating, what not to do while dating, why middle-aged women are very easy, don't talk about sex on the first day, why shouldn't you, don't say X about on the first day, why religion shouldn't. Welcome to Dirty Truth Radio Show. This is our inaugural show, and I'm your host, Fred Hawthorne, and this is our lovely co-host, Roselle. And um, what this show is going to provide to our audience is just an open discussion and honest truth about truths about relationships and topics that uh, very few couples or very few people dating are, uh, are open to discussing. And, uh, and feel free to call in. Um, you can either go to irantradio.com or you can call in at 855-969-RANT. That's 855-969-7268 if you can't spell. But um, we're going to jump right into the show. <laughs> Roselle, so what's our topic for today? The topic for tonight is first date. First date. It's the perspective, the difference between a man's and a woman's uh-huh. perspective going on a first date. Mm-hmm. First, on a woman, we have to go get our money and pedicure. Medic. Pedic- we just have to get ready. Uh-huh. And I want to know, does the guy get, how long do you guys stay? Well, I have a, I have rules about first dating. Of course you have rules. Uh, <laughs> I think for a male, the first date should always be pre-planned. So, for example, every man out there in America and abroad should have a first date outfit. And, and the reason why I say you should have a first date outfit because it's similar to a job interview. When you, when you take your clothes to the yes. cleaners uh, and you step in to that, to that potential employer, you're, you're fit and you're dressed as well as you can be. And that's how you should present yourself on the first date with the woman, you know, um, take that first date outfit to the cleaners and it should it should exude every great characteristic that you have physically whether it's you have a great chest you have biceps uh, you know you have overall great physique you should exude that on the first date and um, I, I, I think a first date outfit is essential very very essential um, I went out on a date last Thursday oh how was it it, it, it was alright <laughs> <laughs> was I <laughs> no because I met this guy before uh-huh. he found me at some club sure and he already saw how i dress mm-hmm. and you know me well mm-hmm. this is my casual mm-hmm. i'm very well dressed woman mm-hmm. so on a first date i was expecting him to up up the game mm-hmm. you know no he was wearing a jeans and a t-shirt jeans and a t-shirt a jeans and a t-shirt that it looks like it's not even iron it looks like he just roll roll over so out he, of the bed. he had a uh, 3x t-shirt on was he more of a more of a gang member or a Ku Klux Klan I member. Know. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's the same thing for women. I I do believe that on the first date, she needs to prepare herself too. Mm-hmm. She needs to get ready. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it takes an hour or two. Get your hair done, you know, your nails done. And pick the style. I even put it here. Pick the style that suits your body type. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and- Okay, I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead, finish what you're saying. You know, skinny jeans are not for everyone. <laughs> no, so all, <laughs> no, Ed, I always have a rule of thumb with women. If you have to ask, does it look good? You shouldn't be wearing it, you know? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> you know, because women always ask, how, how do I look in this? Well, if you have to ask, because what you, you can personally see yourself. So if you feel, if you look good, it's going to exude through your action. So if you're asking, how do I look and should I wear this? You shouldn't wear it, you know. I the thing is like when you're with a person for a long time, you ended up trying. It's kind of part of the teasing. Mm-hmm. That's why when a woman asks, "How do I look?" Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you know a woman should do is like, "Do you want this or do you want this uh-huh. to peel off me?" Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but it also takes a, it takes a great man to have you want to do stuff like that. Uh-huh. You know, um, I think that men. Getting back to first dates, everything should be pre-planned, you know, like from your outfit to the directions and the navigation system to where you're going for dinner. All this must be pre-planned. But more importantly about pre-planned, you have to pretend that you've never done this event before. So although you're taking her to the same restaurant that you took the other 15 young ladies to, you have to make this woman that's right before you make her believe that this is the first time you've been here. This restaurant has so much character. Um, I'm enjoying your presence, and I'm more important. I'm going to enjoy my company with you, and hopefully by the end of the date, um, you and I can have sex. That's the <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> that's the oh. goal. That's the goal of uh, of uh, of men on first dates. 
And I know men and women, men are from Mars, women from Venus, but if you want to be pragmatic about it, Roselle, the goal of a man is when he asks you out, his goal is by the end of the night is to sleep with you. And I know middle of America and Orthodox Christians and religious folks might say, no, what about the heart? What about the soul? This is my soulmate. I'm searching for my husband. But before date one, every man has slept with that woman in their mind at least 2,000 times. You know, we have envisioned you in our bed, on your back, butt naked, saying Jesus or my name simultaneously. <laughs> Before date one. Before date one. Absolutely. Before date one. Before date one. Same thing with a women. <laughs> we already envision it, uh -huh. but not about sex. It's how how this go, guy going to sweep me off my feet. Sweep you off your feet. Yeah, like kind of like swoon me. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It's a different goal. Mm -hmm. If I don't feel like I'm being swooned, mm -hmm. you're not going to get me. You're not going to get me there. Okay. That's your goal. So you need to, I think for a man, you need to find out what's the goal of a woman first mm -hmm. and achieve that so you can achieve your goal. Okay. So, so if I might ask Roselle, what characteristics or what must a man do to swoon you and many other women as well? You know, sh you know, when you said that um, a lot of women are saying that she will be dead. Mm -hmm. And according to your book, for those people who haven't read this book. <laughs> What's the title of it? Okay. It? If the title is Why Did I Sleep With Him? Uh -huh. It's a really good book. And like I said before, I almost threw it out of the window mm -hmm. on the first two chapters. Because it seems like you're telling this man how to be a player. Mm -hmm. How to get women in bed. Mm -hmm. To have sex with them. But in later on, it's actually how to become a man. A man of man. Mm -hmm. You know, how to be a great man. Mm -hmm. So I like it. I mm -hmm. finish it in two sittings. Wow. Make it two sittings. And, um, That's the effect I have on many women. <laughs> <laughs> no, but go ahead. Okay, Please back to chivalry. Uh -huh. And you said chivalry is free. Very and it's free. true, very, very true, because there's so many instances that I, when we started talking, that <laughs> I will walk too fast and mm -hmm. ended up opening the door for, for you, and you stopped me. Uh -huh. And I have to check myself, and now I'm going back to that position and say, hey, I like this. Mm -hmm. And it's really now when I go on a, on a date, I look forward to that man opening the door for me, mm -hmm. because I'm a woman, mm -hmm. and I want to... I want a man that can lead me. In the end, I want a man that can lead me. And opening the door is free, mm -hmm. you know, and it will give you a lot of points. It will, definitely. And getting back to chivalry, um, about first dating. Guys, <laughs> I, I must say this, and I'm not going to toot my own horn or say that it's gotten me f places far and beyond, but if you do certain things on a first date, you will, by the end of the date, win. I'm going to give guys three tips automatically about shivering. I'm not opening the door for, but here's the catch. Open up the door for the woman. Allow her to go through it. It gives you two reasons. One, it gives her the, it gives her the idea that you are a great man. And two, it allows you to see her ass and see what type of calves and legs she's working with. And, <laughs> and, and as she's walking through the door, part two to this, and this is going to win her over because women are so infatuated with the man being their protector, right? So when you're a man protector, a female protector, for three steps, allow her to walk closest to the curve. Just for three steps. And you go up behind her and you politely grab her waist and move her to the inside of the curve. And she's going to instinctively think that. You're a man that can simply protect her. And these are just small attributes that you can add to your date that will take her mental, mental approach to a whole nother level and get her one step closer to your ultimate goal. And, and I'm sorry, women, and you guys don't want to hear this, but our goal on every date, if we have not done it yet, is to, by the end of the date, have sex and or make love to you, depending on all emotions towards you. Yeah, because... This, it's not sex for women. It's intimacy. Intimacy. You're starting it with that intimacy. When putting that hands on our waist, make uh -huh. sure that we feel safe. You're already <laughs> having points. And by the end of the night, if you have 100 points, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is intimacy for a woman? I, I, what is intimacy? Define intimacy. It's just so people out it, there. For me, is uh, you, okay, I always say it. I'm always looking for that connection. 
is not after the physical connection. It has to put me in a higher level connection. You have to able to make me laugh. Yeah, I have to able to have an intellectual conversation with you. At least get my attention longer than two minutes. And if I do say something, you should be able to repeat it if I ask or reinstate that question. So I will tell, I usually I will trap a man. Mm -hmm. You know, so what do you think what I said that this and that? And then he was like, huh? Oh, I know. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not right. going to happen. So give us an example of a great first date you've had. I'm 35 years old. I had my very, very great first date last year. Last year. Around May, summer. Uh -huh. See, I even remember. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so he was memorable, I think. It's it. memorable because he was prepared, mm -hmm. just like you said, he was prepared. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll. I found out that he able to follow up on a phone call on the day off and even on the day before mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm still confirming the mm -hmm. date. And he confirming a woman should not confirm a date. A man should confirm a date. Absolutely. Uh huh. You have to, go, ahead, go ahead. And then he took me to a show mm -hmm. and he already have a prepared seat. So we're not waiting at the will call. Mm -hmm. He already picked up the, you know, the ticket and then he took me out to a dinner and he already made the reservation. And before that, he already prepared how long it's going to take us to get there. Okay. So he's already prepared. I like that. The preparation actually seems to me that he was looking forward to seeing me. So he was giving you an impression that he was, an, he was born a leader. Yes. And, and is that an attribute that you look for in a man? Leadership? Yes. Leadership. Uh, like a man's man's, like um, I always say, alpha male. Alpha male. Alpha male. Okay. Uh -huh. It's amazing. Why do we're about to go to break in a second? But and when we come back, we're gonna ask Roselle why women love alpha males, and then when they get them, they attempt to try and change them. Oh, that's a good question. That, yeah, you, you you thirst for it, and then so when we come back audience we're gonna we're gonna ask Roselle that great question why do women seek an alpha male and then when they get them latched on to themselves they attempt to train them we'll be right back the three guys rant with arvin mike and phil coming to you on the rant radio network every monday from 6 to 8 p.m pacific standard time you can call us at 855-69 the three guys <laughs> it's not the three guys this is why you should turn in because one has tourettes the you other really, one's illiterate you really should listen and you never know what's gonna happen 855-69 three guys g-u-y-s and the number three not the Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> what up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. DM Narc Radio Show is now airing on the Rant Radio Network. You've heard the three guys Rant refer to us as the Clam Chowder Power Hour. Now we get to bring our New England humor over to Los Angeles. We'll be airing Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern, and we'll cover everything from local to national politics and news. Guess what? We're uncensored, too. I'm Dave. Join me and Nick Friday on the Rant Radio Network. We're the Brothers Bear Podcast Live, and I'm your host, Sanch, and I'm always joined by... Edgar, Carlos Madrano, and this is a show where we talk about... Comics, movies, TV, video games, stand-up, music, and many more geeky things. Catch us live on Rat Radio Network on Mondays from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. That's another commercial in the back.
Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly B. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. And we're back. I figure we can't have a relationship show without having the great Lenny Williams bring us in with the greatest love song of all time. I love that song. That, I would try and sing it, but I'm kind of hoarse, so I'll, uh, I'll save my talents for American Idol <laughs> when I come back. But uh, uh, Roselle, before we left, I asked you a yes. question. Why do women, I think instinctively, th they are attracted to alpha males, and then when they get an alpha male in terms of dating, they attempt to change them. Um, Why is that? Yes. Whereas we have to define what is an alpha male. Okay, great. Uh -huh. Because like I was this morning telling you, we have an Instagram, by the way, and it's a Dirty Truth radio show. Dirty Truth radio. Uh -huh. So go follow us. And if you go to hashtag and hashtag or search it, alpha male, everyone is like putting pictures of just, muscles like this no that is not an alpha male i work out six times a week and there's no way i'm an alpha male that is not an alpha male alpha male is a leader alpha male you can put him anywhere it can be a politician an author uh, a president or even just a student he will excel because no one is stopping this guy he will get what he wants and need to go get that goal mm -hmm. and i can you know like you said you can smell it uh -huh, when there's an alpha it. male uh -huh. alpha f female i can sense it when there's an alpha male mm -hmm. because he will not get intimidated by me and i'm a strong female uh -huh. when i walk in i walk with commanding attention mm -hmm. you know so when i see an alpha male he is not a tyrant in power but he is soft you can, he has no compassion, like you said, mm -hmm. but he can make you feel like you're the center of the world. Mm -hmm. Even though there's other ladies out there, but at that <coughs> moment in time, he can make you feel like the center of the world. And that's what we want. We want someone that can lead us. We want someone that can provide for us. We want someone that be proud of us. And fuck the shit out of us. <laughs> 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 I have to say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the audience... <laughs> Would probably agree in silence. Those are <laughs> four. The, Those are four. Provide, protect, profess, and fuck, fuck. the shit out of them. Right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those are goals. But but getting back to the question, alpha males, and, and you hit it on the head, no matter if you're playing softball on Saturday morning or the CEO on Monday morning, mm -hmm. an alpha male will lead in both places. Yes. And and. and and what I mean by lead, it's not the guy, and he used the word tyrant, who goes in and says, this is my show, and this is how we're doing it. No way about it. You're not getting around it. I'm in charge. This is how it should be done. An alpha male has the ability to lead, to, has the ability to lead any type of personality. Yes. You know, and, and, and now they call that, uh, in 2013, they call that swag, you know, wh wh where mm. the man got that. Swansea about him you know he got that little grace about him where where he looks like nobody else exists around him when he's when when yeah. when the world is around him but he's the only one you can see you know he's like he's like doing a michael jackson moonwalk when everyone else is running right this is what you're gonna hear about the girlfriends there's just something about him there's just something about, <laughs> there's just him. Something about him i couldn't figure it out but oh my god mm -hmm. Yeah, those like, are women talking about you. You abs know, absolutely. That's one of the that's that that's a great compliment, guys. When a when a woman says there's something about there's something about you, you need to step on the gas pedal. You know, and and, and what I mean by step yes. on the gas pedal is mean lead immediately. Yes. You know, be an example of what a man should be and what he should become and what he will become. You know, because at that very moment, she believes you quite possibly could be the one. You know, mm -hmm. she has forgiven your faults and says your your greatness is far greater than your faults. Yes. You know, 
And um, it's actually a challenge. Mm -hmm. I want to see more. It's kind of like that. It's uh -huh. like there's something about you. It's kind of uh -huh. like saying, "Show me more," show so me I can more. figure it out. Uh -huh. So meaning, come on, uh -huh. step on your gas and uh -huh. see what we can do here. Absolutely. So Absolutely. don't hold back. I don't know why men do the hot and cold thing. Uh -huh. It doesn't work. That mm -hmm. passive aggressive to me, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. It mm -hmm. makes me feel like you're not decisive. Okay. An alpha male to me is decisive. He knows what he wants, he has a plan, and he will execute it. Execute it. 100%. Execution, right? Execution. Yeah, wh whether it's on the softball field, as I mentioned, on Saturday morning or Monday morning at the CEO, he has the ability to execute. That's a great word. We, I should use the word execute. Men, so out there, on first dates, we got to execute. Let's rewind real quick. First, we got to have the outfit, just in case you <laughs> missed the beginning of the show. You have to have a first date outfit. Yep. Two, you have to have the address where you're going already in a navigation system as if you've pre-planned it and and i didn't i didn't say this in the beginning but you don't want to go to a chain restaurant on first dates you want to go somewhere where it has great character less than 15 miles from your house because she doesn't she doesn't want to imply she wants to go to the house but if you have a great date you have to get to your house as soon as possible before that alcohol wears out. So you want to be, <laughs> <laughs> you want to be roughly ten to fifteen miles away from your house, and and you can imply, you can imply that without telling her you're ten to fifteen miles away. You know a great restaurant that's on this side of town, but she has no idea where you live yet. So you can say, I have this great restaurant that's on this side of town. And I think you would enjoy it. They have great ambiance. It's, 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 it's not as intimate, and, it's, and, 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 and I believe you will feel comfortable. You know, as opposed to saying the word intimate, I just want to, you would tell a woman, I want to take you to a place where you can feel comfortable on the first date. Although you've been on this date 15 times and uh -huh. taken 15 different women to this one restaurant, if you use the word comfortable, now she's thinking, hey, he's pretty selfless, you know, to think about me on the first date as opposed to, just thinking about him and what you're going to eat and how we're going to eat and, you know, his goals. He's thinking about uh -huh. me, you know, backtrack. So And it show preparation on your end, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so, let's, so let's move forward a bit. So how do you, on a first date, how does a man provide for a woman on a first date? He should pay. He should pay. <laughs> I had another date. <laughs> Oh, I'm not man. talking about the same date a while ago that the guy just seems like just roll over out of bed. Mm -hmm. This is another date. Mm -hmm. And what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, I'm like an expert on first date. I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing out there. Because I called because, him right because after. I know the, because I know exactly what happened. So, but go ahead, Rosa. I'll, okay, I'll try okay. not to interrupt you. What happened? I have a tendency to trap a man. Mm -hmm. You know, to test a man without even him knowing that mm -hmm. I'm testing him. So we went to his restaurant that he suggested. So mm -hmm. I would think he already know that the price is OK. It's not expensive. It's not cheap. It's, you know, mm -hmm. two dollar signs. I think they will see it on Yelp. <laughs> so we went there. I told him he doesn't need to pick me up because I want to see his home. It's close to his home. I suggested that I want it. Around his own. <laughs> I trap him that I told him that I have a work, you know, right there. Because I do have work that I need to do on that side vicinity, of sure. side of town. Mm -hmm. And when we got to the restaurant, we got the bill. I pushed $20. Mm -hmm. You know, it's half of the bill. Mm -hmm. And he took it. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. He accepted it. And for me, it shows that he cannot provide. For $20, he showed me that he cannot provide for me guys whether <laughs> she has the potential to be your wife or whether she has a or whether she has the potential to be a jump off don't jeopardize either one of them for twenty dollars yep you know it, it makes no sense because i innately believe that the goal of every man is to have sex with the woman if it's going to cost you twenty dollars to sleep with the woman or not necessarily sleep with the woman, take you to third base. You pay the $20. You pay the $40 bill. It was a cheap restaurant. It's a cheap restaurant. Yeah. It's a $40 bill, including pay. the tip. I put down 20 Yeah. 
So we have our first caller. Oh, my God. <laughs> first caller. So we're going to take our first call. Hopefully I get this right. Uh -huh. We're just going to hit line one, right? And caller. Hello. Hey, Hello. how you doing? How you doing? This is Manny Pantalones, uh, long-time <laughs> listener, first-time caller. Hey, welcome to our show. How you doing tonight? Uh, I just uh, I came across you guys, and you guys you guys are great. I'm glad that you guys are over on Rent Radio. You guys seem to be exciting. But uh, you guys hit on a subject, and, and I just had a comment. I had a call in. Um, all I'm going to say is, is, is the co-host, what's, what's her name? Roselle. 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 If you didn't want her to take your $20, girl, you shouldn't have put them on the table. Or should I not offer? Well, it's kind of like for women. I, I, I heard so many complaints about men. Oh, my gosh, she didn't even offer. It's kind of like an unwritten rule that a woman will offer to pay half. And it's also an unwritten rule that a man should decline it. And he said, I got you. I got you. And it puts a lot about a man when he says, I got you. And I'll be happy to take back my $20. <laughs> because, I, you know, it's not about who, what, how, uh, the amount. It's who pays for the first date. I think but men should pay for the first date. Th that just sounds like a lot, of, a lot of games and a lot of back and forth just to have the same result at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on our end, yes, it's a lot of back and forth. But um, so why did you put the? Were you trying to? Were you attempting to trap him? No, I'm not attempting to trap him. I just it's for me it's customary to actually offer, and I'm so used to men saying, "Oh no, I got this." He's actually the first time who accepted my twenty dollars. Really? So he, you know, if he wants to even try to hug me or kiss me by the end of the <laughs> night, it's, it, you can throw that out of the window. Manny, what would you have done? Would you have taken twenty dollars, or would you? Oh hell yeah! What about <laughs> you? you had the tip? That's why he's calling. <laughs> oh, man. How so so I'm, I'm guessing that uh, he didn't uh, get lucky that day? No, he didn't. He and didn't. he did call me back, and he did text me, and I haven't returned his call and his text. We got about 30 seconds left. Anything else you want to add to the show, Manny, before we let you uh, go? Uh, all I'm going to say is, is that if she's that complicated, I think the guy's better off. Wow. Wow. Mm, so I guess that's one less man you have to worry so about. So I should not offer. You shouldn't offer if, you, if you're nothing sincere about it. We can just look at each other and see who's going to pay first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that awkward silence, the thunderous the silence. awkward silence. There's Absolutely. always an awkward silence. Absolutely. I was trying to avoid that awkward silence. Oh, well, there you go. All right, well, thank you, guys. You guys are doing a great job over there. All right, appreciate you, man. Thank Thanks you. for calling in. We have another call. We have another call. We only have 10 seconds left. We're going to try and hold them off to the, to, to the next segment. But, uh, okay. Roselle, so... Just be clear and concise. After the date, when he took, the, we got about 30 seconds left. What was your exact thoughts when you called your girlfriend? And we don't have enough time. So when we come back, we're going to get the honest truth from Roselle. What she thought and what she told her girlfriends on that phone call. Yeah, because we did he, talk. Because he took the $20. Yes. $20 might have cost him A 20 date. other dates with yes. you on your back. A home is the biggest investment in most people's lives. Buying or selling should be a positive experience. Whether you want to be a wealthy real estate investor or just trying to find a place to call home. At AGR and Associates, we focus on the client's needs. We understand the market better than most. Let us bring the value to you and make the right choice. AGR and Associates, making your dream house a reality. Call us today for a free consultation at 562-842-7149. With a track record of great results, bringing knowledge, wisdom, and expertise to you. Hablamos Español. Oh, man. TheTicketSurgeon.com reaches at 855-WIN-4199. Did you get caught speeding, texting while driving, or doing anything else you weren't supposed to do? Give us a call. Don't miss work. Don't lose out on the money. Don't get any more points. What about your insurance? Let us fight for you. TheTicketSurgeon.com at 855-WIN-4199. This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whenever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, 
I drink mucho macho, Michelin. <laughs> if only Arvin could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Hi, I'm Eddie Sell, creator of Firehouse Chefs, and you're listening to FHC Radio. Join us every Wednesday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. and join our community of firefighters, chefs, food industry professionals, celebrities, and more as we take you on a journey that melds our professional passions into a fun, insightful, and engaging show. Welcome to FHC Radio on the Rant Radio Network. I think I'm going to just start singing. We need to get to the hook. I watched television till television went off. And you've never been in love like I've been in love before. But I got that song. <laughs> Y'all go out to YouTube the song and listen to it or go on iTunes and buy it. According to myself and Steve Harvey, it's the greatest love song of all time. So, But um, <clears throat> I'm going to jump right back into it. And uh, I'm just going to talk about personal experience before we jump into where the first date should be, you know, as opposed to social norms. When I first started dating women, I mean, I was, <laughs> when I first started, like I was gay first and then <laughs> became heterosexual second. No, but um, I didn't have a bank account. I did not have a car. I had no money. And I was just a poor little college boy. So you were broke. I was dead broke <laughs> and black. So that makes it twice <laughs> as bad. You know what I mean? So, so, so go figure. But. What I told myself, I said, I'm going to have characteristics that money cannot buy. So what I did was that at 18, I began working out every day. And I told myself, I'm never going to drink. I'm never going to smoke. And I'm going to be able to make a woman's imagination, arouse a woman's imagination. And how I did that was... I became a secret nerd. How old were you? <laughs> 18, 19 <laughs> years old. Oh my goodness. 18. Because at 18, 19, I was I love basketball. Uh-huh. But when I walked onto the college campus and saw thousands of women at my disposal or my disposal, disposal. yeah. Ooh, I we, said, I, I want them all. We can have color about that word. <laughs> <laughs> I I want them all. And 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 so so I became a secret nerd. My friends never knew this, but I would read books after book, after book, to increase my diction, because... Your addiction? My addiction, yeah, <laughs> words, words, so, so, and, um, and as I grew, my bundle of women grew, you know, as I got in better shape, my confidence uh -huh. obviously grew, and, but I, I just want to reiterate, I had no money, I had no bank account, no car, and I was just either no car, no car. I was either a freshman or sophomore in college, uh -huh. and I had women driving thirty to sixty miles just to come see just me, just to come see just you, just to come see me. And <laughs> and so so, not that that's a myth that you got to have the money, that you got to have the car, but more importantly than all those attributes is self confidence. You know, I yes, my confidence one day in my life has never wavered. I've never gone through life. And my confidence has never wavered. I've never looked at something and said I couldn't accomplish it. When I looked at a woman, I let her know that I'm the alpha male. I am in charge. My confidence exudes outside my skin. And I just want women to know out there that confidence will take you much further than your car can drive. Confidence will have more value than all your money can buy. Confidence will fill her stomach up far more than a $300 filet mignon. You know, so I just want guys out there to know confidence, 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 confidence. will take you far and beyond and allow you to go the extra mile. So, <clears throat> And it's true. 
Yeah, it's true. Conf men, women love confident men. I love confidence because it shows. It, uh -huh. He can tell a joke uh -huh. when he's confident. Sure. His sense of humor is sexy as hell. Uh -huh. So it shows confidence when he can just laugh. You know, you can laugh, just laugh with to, you. Yes, laugh, with, laugh you. with me. Absolutely. And the thing is that it doesn't matter anymore where you guys are eating. If it is, I don't care if it is Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. If we were laughing together. Uh -huh. Huh. So it doesn't matter because I told you on the first day that I really like still remember because mm -hmm. of the preparation. It was an expensive restaurant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But when it comes to confidence, it was the date that I have in a mom's and pop's restaurant yeah. that I will never forget because we laugh for two, three hours. Yeah, when you're confident, you can you can make that T-bone steak taste like a filet mignon. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, and um, but uh, let's fast forward. This is something you and I had discussed before the show and this is so tabooed in america mama told you not to grandma said never do it but yeah. i have a theory and i agree with it <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> that, <laughs> all right that the first date should always be at a man's house yes and the reason why <laughs> i say this girls feel free to call in and argue and debate with me but you know how you say there's something about this man. I can't figure him out. I don't know what he does. He's always leaving me with a cliffhanger. You know, I got one leg on earth and one leg on the, in the air. If you allow yourself, and I'm not saying you pack three condoms and you pack an overnight <laughs> bag and you, you wear your matching thong and your matching bra, your Vicky set, but if you allow yourself to open yourself up and not go the mediocre route. And what I mean by mediocre route, hey, we go to dinner, we have two drinks, I know that you have a job, I know that you have a car, and I know that you can eat warm food. But if you allow yourself to open yourself up and say, you know what, let's try it a little bit different this time. I've gone, I've gone on 100 first dates, and obviously they didn't work because I'm still out here on the market. I want to have the date at your house. And now women's heads are spinning like, and guys like, hell yeah, at my house. But <laughs> women, if you have the date at his house, you will learn so much more about this man yes. as opposed to eating over lukewarm food, making someone else's, making someone else money. With the same conversation that you have with your first 30 dates before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, and women might say, hey, I might feel uncomfortable, but... You, you say you're going to feel more uncomfortable when you realize that this man was married, when you realize that this man has cheese on you, when you realize this man was bisexual. Uh -huh. So what I said, if you have a, your first date at his house, you will learn so much more about him. What is he clean? That, go ahead. You, you, you. No, because I have a story. I went on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I went Do you on a go date. on dates eight days a week? Or? Oh, my gosh. I probably go on a date <laughs> twice a week, once a week. I get ass out a lot. <clears throat> but the thing is, like, finding that connection. And you're connection. still single. I'm still single oh, okay. because I am in search for a connection. Mm -hmm. You know, and I felt it before. Mm -hmm. I was married before, so mm -hmm. I know how it feels like to be mm -hmm. in love. Mm -hmm. I'm not really looking for to be mad in love right away, but I'm looking for that. It radiates mm -hmm. out of you. Mm -hmm. So on the first day, it's supposed to be a breakfast. A brunch. He wants to be, you know, something different. So he picked a restaurant right next to his place. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, when the conversation was really doing good, he says, would you like to watch a movie? Which was not planned because I actually have a meeting. And you know what? When he says, let me go back to my place. Just follow me. I'll go get my jacket. I know it was a trap, mm -hmm. but I have to see this man's place, mm -hmm. right? I canceled my meeting for him. Mm -hmm. When we got to his place, he had a party the night before, and he told me to sit down right next to him, and he washed the dishes while we were talking. Mm -hmm. It was different. It was something new to me. But I saw that there's a piano in his house, so I know that he plays piano. Mm -hmm. I saw the magazine of architecture, so I know already that he's into architecture. Mm -hmm. I love vintage, mm -hmm. so he's into vintage. So I can see that his house is clean. I can see healthy food. Mm -hmm. So you starting to gather this information without even asking questions, questions. and being a nagger. And you're, oh, my God, he's inter she's interrogating me. No. Absolutely. Being of servant pays a lot. You know, it pays a lot to you. You can actually gather this information to decide, is this the guy 
that I would say yes to to a second date. Mm. So it actually worked for you. It works for me. Having the first date at his house. Yes. <clears throat> it was not planned, but it seems like it was the right mm -hmm. thing to do. So when you told me about it and I said, I agree mm -hmm. because it happened to me. Yeah. You will learn so much more. And, and women always say, he tricked me. He duped me. But no. if you have the first date at his house, you can throw half those pretenses and half those norms and questions that you had previous can be answered. I mean, you don't want it to be like that Southwest commercial where you go into his his drug cabinet and oh. and it falls down <laughs> and you like want to get away. But <laughs> but <laughs> but <clears throat> take the time, step outside your box because you've gone you've gone on dates yep. and you're still dating. So take the chance, take a leap of faith. Listen to Roselle and Fred Hawthorne for once in your life and have the first date at his house. Yep. And you never know. You may not leave. Uh -huh. He may end up proposing and marrying you down the line, but take the chance. I Go ahead. You're, you're bitten at the tongue to say no, something. No, because <laughs> what's so funny is, like I told you, I've been dating. But since I met you, mm -hmm. I changed my tactic. Mm -hmm. I changed my perspective. I become more open. Mm -hmm. And it honestly feels like I have more in control of the dating. Mm -hmm. If you're going to let this guy lead you anyway, and who's gonna? he's going to end up taking control anyway. Might as well take control of the dating phase mm -hmm. because you're trying to get to know him. And then once you decide, okay, <clears throat> I'm okay, I'm fine, then I, you can le let him lead you. Mm -hmm. But on that dating phase, I think you should take control because you're trying to get to know this person. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. I went to his place and I ended up knowing more about him. And what better way to know a person than in his own home? Yep. It tells a lot about a man. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> After you went to his home, what conversation, what was the conversation like when you called your girlfriend on the way? You said, girl, <laughs> <laughs> what was the conversation like after you left his home and the date ended? I was like, girl, you washed the dishes right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> that was sexy. <laughs> that was sexy. <laughs> but the thing is, like, while he was doing it, we were having a conversation about his family. Mm -hmm. And I found out that he loves his family first. Mm -hmm. He loves his mother, which is number one anyway. Mm -hmm. If the man have a not, not, doesn't have a good relationship with his mother, red flag. Mm -hmm. That's a red flag. Yeah, I did, that's why I don't. Get, that's why I don't get when women say, "Oh, he's a mama's boy." Oh, he's the oh, no. guys. Be a mama's boy. Uh -huh. Don't. In addition to be a mama's boy, love the woman you fall in love with. You know, you have to understand that your mother is the woman who gave birth to you. In addition to, not but. You have a wife. In addition to the woman that gave birth to you, yes. you must love, protect, provide, profess, and fuck the shit out of the woman <laughs> that you fall in love with. Those four things. Those four things. Protect, provide, profess, yes. and, and fuck the shit, shit out of her. Yep. And we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about protect, provide, profess. Pull the hair. Pull the hair? <laughs> Pull the hair. Pull the hair, guys. So you're hearing it, you're hearing it first. Pull the hair and uh, provide. <laughs> we'll be back in two minutes. Guys. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today.
We're the Brothers Bear Podcast Live, and I'm your host, Sanch, and I'm always joined by... Edgar. Carlos Medrano. And this is a show where we talk about... Comics? Movies? TV? Video games? Stand-up? Music? And many more geeky things? Catch us live on Rat Radio Network on Mondays from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. That's another commercial in the back. A home is the biggest investment in most people's lives. Buying or selling should be a positive experience. Whether you want to be a wealthy real estate investor or just trying to find a place to call home. At AGR and Associates, we focus on the client's needs. We understand the market better than most. Let us bring the value to you and make the right choice. AGR and Associates, making your dream house a reality. Call us today for a free consultation at 562-842-7149. With a track record of great results, bringing knowledge, wisdom, and expertise to you. Hablamos Español. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Laza with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. DM Narc Radio Show is now airing on the Rant Radio Network. You've heard the three guys Rant refer to us as the Clam Chowder Power Hour. Now we get to bring our New England humor over to Los Angeles. We'll be airing Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern, and we'll cover everything from local to national politics and news. Guess what? We're uncensored, too. I'm Dave. Join me and Nick Friday on the Rant Radio Network. And we're back, Roselle. Yes, we're back. So, before we left, I I was curious as to the conversation you had with your girlfriend after you had your first date at the man's house. At the man's house. Yes. I just told you it's so different. And just like I said, there's something about him. But there's something about him and it's followed already by a question. He plays piano. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, my God, he plays piano. He has a nice home. It's clean. He loves architect. And it was like, how long was the date? Mm-hmm. The thing is, like, the date ended for seven hours. And it's supposed to be an hour of breakfast. But because I found out that this guy has a possibility of, I found a connection with him because I went to his home. We ended up having a very long date, and it was a good date. Ended okay. up with a third date, and Fourth second date, third date. So you know, on and so forth. So on and so forth. Okay, so it actually worked out, having yes. Okay, so I, I'll just reiterate what I said. Have the ladies have the first date at his house. I'm not gonna beat the mule until it's dead, but take a chance, take a leap of faith. Now I want to get into <clears throat> canceling dates. This is just real quick, oh my God. guys. <laughs> if ladies are gonna cancel dates, we get it. Easy question. Mm-hmm. When a woman cancels a date, you always follow up with a phone call. Yes. Don't go don't go the anger management route and go cold on her. Follow up. She's going to give you an excuse. Her mom is in the hospital. Uh, she has to do an assignment. Follow up the next day and ask her, how was the assignment? What did you do? Is everything okay? I'm looking forward to rescheduling a date with yes. you. Yes. You know, and you give her some tentative ideas or some days where you can move forward and potentially go on that next date but for men here's what i i have problems with men give weak excuses in terms of why they cancel dates guys stop what you're doing and pay attention when you cancel a date with a woman there's a handful of excuses that you can give one you fail to remember that your niece or nephew is graduating from middle school or they're getting a promotion. They were a student of the month and you have to go to that you have to go to that promotion mm-hmm. for your for your family member. Don't say, Well, um, the Laker game is on and I want to hang out with my boys or oh, no, oh I'm no, going no. to play basketball. No. Or two. <laughs> That's how I can I'm an opera singer. <laughs> or two. You're very involved in your community and you have to 
help someone on a campaign trail and, or you give you give mature excuses why you're canceling a date. Don't give excuses like I got to hang out with my boys or I like that mature. Yeah, you give excuses. give mature. Yeah, uh -huh. or you know, don't I mean, mom is yeah, but give mature. Like it's a part of your life. It's a part of your love and caring for our society, our America is the reason why you're canceling the day. Not because you're selfish. Although you may be selfish, the reason why you're canceling the day is you want to actually go watch Game 7. Don't show The Heat it. versus the Pacers. <laughs> Don't tell her you want to watch the Heat versus Game 7. Tell her that your niece is graduating from second grade and or she was student of the month and they're having a service for her and she's getting a certificate. And she's going to be like, oh. <laughs> He's so thoughtful. This is why I almost threw up, <laughs> throw up the book. <laughs> I want to trash it, <laughs> but it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Because someone canceled on me. Uh huh. And he texted it. Text. Instead of calling me, but it was a legit excuse. Uh -huh. He he went snowboarding mm -hmm. and he couldn't get get out of the mountain, you okay. know, early enough. And instead of we me rescheduling it, I just have to. Sure. We just have to cancel. Sure. But call. Please call. Call. We, Absolutely. I know why. I don't know. I do not know why men text now. Too much. You know what I believe? Texting should be an exclamation point of what you have already done. So, for example. Oh, that's a good one. If you have a conversation with a woman and you say, hey, I'm going to, I'm looking forward to seeing you at six, but at three o'clock, I'm going to go take care of something. You send her a text, like, I just got done with my 3 o'clock appointment. Looking forward to seeing you at 6. Yes. You don't text her, hey, can we go out at 6? Uh -huh. That's 2013 stuff, you know. Uh. That's part of chivalry. You know, let technology work for you. Because she's already been on 50, 60, 75 dates already. And those 50, 60, 75 yes. dates have text her. Call her and allow the texting and other forms of technology to enhance what you have already done with the woman. Don't let that be the primary source of communication uh -huh. and or what you have or what you will do with the woman. Yes. You get what I'm saying? I, 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 yes, I get it because some men will say, but I'm a quality man. Uh, I'm unique. No, you're not because uh -huh. you're doing the same uh -huh. thing. Those other 30 men that I went out Absolutely. with. Absolutely. That's why I'm still single. <laughs> <laughs> and, and leading into the first date, I have... I actually have, it's a chapter in my book, Why Did I Sleep With Them? Go pick it up, Amazon.com. It's really good. Thank you, Rosetta. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I want to gift wrap it for Christmas <laughs> for every homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> um, the phone game. Guys. Oh, the phone game. Yeah. Leading up to the first date, don't text. I'm, I'm just going to be 100 with you guys. Don't text. Allow your voice to be an instrument. Okay, and what I mean by instrument, we can change tones. When she's talking back, talk underneath her so it shows, it shows endearment. It shows affection. It shows compassion. You're not at the basketball game with your boys. If she says, hey, how was your day? I did this. Um, and then you respond by, oh, I'm, you know, I, I'm glad it worked <laughs> out for you today. And I'm, and. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it on our date at 6 p.m. Uh -huh. or Friday night at 6 p.m. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it as opposed to saying, yeah, yeah, rah, 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 rah. No, calm, gentle. You may not be that person, uh -huh. but you're actually selling it. And before you pick up the phone and hit the seventh number, you have to have a plan. You have to have, you have to know what you're going to do in that phone conversation because keep in mind, if you're not leading, you're following. And if you're following, you're going to be behind the guy that's going to lead her. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Uh huh. So pre-plan what you're going to say. If you have to write it down, write it down. Don't sound like a computer when you're conversing with her, Roselle. Mm -hmm. But allow it to flow. But have a plan. And keep in mind, your plan is to have the first date. And by the end of the first date, in a perfect scenario, have sex with her. But keep in mind. I can't believe I'm agreeing with this. <laughs> <laughs> but keep in mind your goals. 
And Roselle used a great word at the beginning of the show. Guys, we are here to execute, 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 execute. What is your goal? What is your goal? What, what is, is your, your vision? Uh -huh. Like Eric, the great Eric Thomas says, what's your why? Uh huh. You know, you got to have, you have to execute your why. Know your why. She wants you to leave. She wants you to undress her. Yes. But before you undress her, you have to get her to the destination to undress her. You need to fulfill our goal first so you can fulfill your goals. Everyone's happy. I don't know why people are not doing it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. Just like I said, take the, the woman to your house, mm -hmm. right? To the guy's house. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we're achieving our goal to get to know you without even talking to us. You know, we don't even that question and answer first. Mm -hmm. So there's already a connection there. And this is like, oh, we're connecting in this some way and this <laughs> way. I know. Oh. Guys, women thirst for that connection. We only mm -hmm. have a couple of minutes left. So we got about three or four minutes left. And uh, Roselle, just remind the audience what they listen to and, you know. This is the dirty truth radio show <laughs> you have a sexy accent right I'm is that what the guys tell you i have a very sexy <laughs> accent dirty truth radio show and it's every tuesday from 6 30 to 7 30 p.m Six. at rant radio network.com yeah so feel free uh -huh. and um we have oh. a caller about the end we're gonna end the show on the call we got a couple minutes left and uh <clears throat> we also have an instagram oh tell them about the instagram yes and facebook we also and all have that. A, uh, the facebook is also is a page it's dirty truth radio show and it's also on Instagram, the same username, Dirty Truth Radio Show. We have a, we only have two minutes, but we have a caller. Okay, Let's take the caller I'm really interested. Quick. Caller, you got about thirty-five seconds. Hello. Hey, caller. Yes, hello. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Um, I I'm sorry. What was the gentleman's name that's on the show? Uh, my name is Fred Hawthorne, brother. How you doing? Fred, Fred, how are things? Good. Hey, uh, Fred, real quick. I have five daughters. Okay. Okay, and when I listen to you, man, I tell you, I cringe because. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I teach I teach my girls uh -huh. uh, that anyone can have good sex, mm -hmm. but but not everyone can have a good relationship. Absolutely, right. And yeah. and you know when I when I hear you talk about the you know the guy's goal is just to get in her pants, uh -huh. it just it just makes me cringe. Like I, I had to I had to call in. Really? So so let me ask you this: before you, since you say five daughters, before you actually went on a date with your wife, I take it right? You've been married. You're married, correct? Uh, yes, yes. Oh. Well, two, two baby mama. I got, uh, I got six <laughs> kids, yeah. Okay. How many times did you envision making love or having sex w with those two women? With your sure, two sure. Women? I mean, I mean, fa fantasizing about things, sure. I mean, we fantasize driving down the street. Well, but that doesn't mean we're going to have sex with everybody that we see. Um, well, but the goal, your goal was to actually have sex. Your goal wasn't to have kids at that moment, correct? Oh, absolutely not. So I'm actually giving the male's perspective as to how to get the woman and if you love her propose her or make her her your fiance and three ultimately marry her and like you have five kids or one kid or have children yeah. i should say but um well, well here's the thing here's the thing in, in in terms of in terms of what i teach my daughters uh -huh. is i teach my daughters not to have sex for the first year of a, of a relationship oh, mainly, oh, because, oh. Ma mainly because <laughs> oh. you're you're first really going to learn who that person is Right, what? because because even even if if you're having sex, uh -huh. that becomes the relationship. I applaud that. I ultimately applaud that. But if you want your daughter not to have sex, you should homeschool her and don't allow her to go to college. No, no, no. I'm I'm not saying I don't want her to have sex. I want that. I want I want my kids and my children to be happy. Absolutely. Sex, sex, and, sex is part of that. And, and, what, and that I, what I'm saying is, what I'm talking about is to have a good relationship. Uh -huh. That's important as well. I, I, I love that aspect is to have a fruitful, a fruitful relationship. But in terms of dating, uh -huh. we're talking, the topic of this show is first dating. And I applaud you for calling in and, and speaking up for your five daughters and disagreeing with me. But I will say this. The goal of most men is to have sex on the first date. And you may disagree because you have five daughters and we respect that. But we're going to move forward with it. I appreciate you calling in, Carl. You failed to mention your name, but um, we got about one minute left. We got uh -huh. about one. One minute then. Thir we got 30 seconds, Roselle. 30 seconds. So. Okay, so on Instagram, we have the Dirty Truth Radio Show, and uh -huh. it's also the same name on Facebook page. So add us, like us, do all the above, and we look forward to 
suggest See you next week. what will be the next topic that we'll yeah uh-huh. email us ask us some questions every tuesday 6 30 to 7 every tuesday 6 30 to 7 30 I'm, I'm your host fred hawthorne and, and this is Roselle. and thanks for listening appreciate you guys thank you good night